Hello learners, I welcome you all in this series which is meant for especially those students who are less acquainted with uh, different genres of the English literature and particularly with, with some literary terms with the ins and outs of the poetry and other genres like prose, fiction. So uh, I hope that this series is going to help you immensely. And in this series, I have taken the first topic as, or you may say this as, as my first series, which is uh, titled as Types of Poetry. And in this series, we are going to discuss thoroughly the all the types of poetry, particularly major types of poetry like the lyrics, the ballads, the sonnets, the ode, and some other dramatic monologues and uh, all types of poetry which can you know uh, pose difficulty before the students while going through the text and they uh, sometime get lost in finding their meaning or they could they cannot understand properly so here is my first series uh, types of poetry and of course i have taken the first uh, topic uh, which is supposed to be the most ancient one in the forms of poetry and this is uh, actually the lyric so let us start with the topic the lyric so before we go to discuss the lyric we must know about uh, you know types of poetry and in that types of poetry uh, it is a general type uh, I am talking about that how many types of poetry are there in general so if we go if we get to know so students we will come to know that there are basically two types of poetry and these two types of poetry are subjective poetry and objective poetry many students are still confused at what actually subjective poetry men means or objective poetry means so let us discuss about all both the type the ob types of the poetry let us first take the objective poetry uh, think about the situation where uh, i tell you to describe uh, what you are seeing outside like you are watching a rain or uh, like you are involved in any action Suppose you are cooking something and I say to you to describe this in your own words or to describe uh, something which you have uh, seen or which you have gone through. So what happens? You start describing that event and while describing that event, you are totally cut from your own self and you are involved in that a particular emotion emotion or in that particular impression uh, which you have gone through which you have seen observe so there is no opinion of yours no personal opinion of yours and neither you are going to describe or add something of yours like for example if you are going to cook something so you are going to describe it step by step and yourself and your opinions your thought your emotions have no place in that process so this is totally cut from your own emotions in your own self that is totally objective that's why when we say uh, objective types of question in an exam so you must be knowing that an examiner checks the question or he corrects the question uh, only on the basis of the answers or of all those options which are given there he never comes to know that what is the real intellect of the student is he very good in writing is he very good in the art of expression there is no thought or emotions of the student no expression which the examiner can know it is just the response which he has marked in the sheet he comes to know and he gives the mark so here no particular personal emotion is involved so objective poetry is totally cut off your own self and personal emotions and expression so let us understand the objective poetry point wise 
I have described it point wise so can so that we can have a crystal clear image of what objective poetry is so let us see that number one point is objective poetry is supplied by external objects such as deeds events and the things we see around that we have already discussed that whatever thing we go through or we see there that or we observe there around cut from ourselves and we start writing a poem on that it is objective poetry for example you know when poetry started so people uh, those who started the civilization or those who started writing poetry at first they used to just uh, express what they have seen as an action or what they have uh, uh, observed all around so it all started with objective poetry at first and they started their uh, poetry was uh, just action oriented and that action which they have seen somewhere or which they have uh, observed somewhere they used to write there so and slowly uh, the emotional points or emotional expression creeps in but it is started with the action oriented poetry and then if you go through all the epics uh, at a starting so you will see that even there no particular emotion of a poet or author is given there only the action is described of some hero or some or some legend now second point is the poet functions as detached observer describing what he has seen or heard so here poet or author those who are writing or the poet who are writing poems they detach themselves and they their emotions are not not involved in that then their focus of attention is outward of themselves it is not inward so when it becomes inward it become you know subjective poetry but it is outward and they are not talking of their inner self their intrinsic emotions rather they go and dis, uh, just try to focus on outward object then uh, these uh, actions or objects can be anything a praise for the act a thrilling occurrence a beautiful sight all are objective writings tone is quite impersonal it becomes naturally impersonal when you are not involved in that objective poetry is older than subjective which i have already described earlier communal ballad is pure poetry of action if we go through some of the ballad form so we will come to know that uh, these ballad forms are actually some storytelling of uh, some action and uh, all this involved objective poetry there are no emotions uh, involved of the poet in that process the epic and drama are two other forms of objective poetry which i have already told and drama if you go through that all those poetic drama which are written they are also a kind of objective form of poetry though it is a uh, debatable topic whether objective and subjective should be separated uh, which on which we are going to discuss in the later part of this ppt so let us move to us next ppt that is subjective poetry what are the um, basics of subjective poetry so you might have come to know uh, you are you might have felt in your life that whenever teacher has given you some uh, portion that how did you feel in a uh, new place or how did you feel in your school or when it comes to feeling and he gives us a writing piece so we will come to know that the whole class has written a different kind of piece because all the expression all the emotions all the uh, memories and all the emotions attached with uh, some uh, that topic are quite different they differ from people to people so they are totally subject to because they demand personal expression personal experiences and personal emotions or personal psychological you know ups and downs while going through that uh, while experiencing that particular thing so subjective poetry is actually supplied by the poet's own thought and feeling if you are going to write suddenly you come across a thought and you start writing on it so it becomes subjective because you are analyzing your own emotions and you are talking about that the poet brings to bear his own reflections upon what he has seen or heard 
there are two kinds of things like one you are seeing one thing and you're describing as it was happening that was objective but you have seen something and you come to your home and you reflect back on it you start thinking about that you produce your own thoughts or emotions you start commenting on that and that's not the direct event which you have seen rather your own thoughts and emotions which are spurted out of the reactions or the reflection of the um, thing so this is called actually subjective subjectivity where you are actually focusing on your own thoughts the focus of attention is the poet himself whatever the subject may be his mind is centered on his own thoughts and feelings which we have discussed tone of course is quite personal when you are talking of personal thing it becomes obviously very personal theoretically subjective and objective poetry belong to two distinct category yet it is almost impossible to separate the one from the other the topic the point which we are we i told you to discuss after has come now that whether it is possible to a uh, separate subjectivity or objectivity from a poem well uh, we can't separate it we can't say that they are totally different scenario they are actually the aspects or the sides of the same coin you know because <clears throat> when we are talking about objectivity sometimes a little bit of subjectivity creeps in in that flow which actually writer has gone through or is going through for example if milton is writing paradise lost or shakespeare is writing some drama and it is totally objective but sometimes some comments brings forth some emotions which is totally personal and where we feel that it is uh, coming from the direct from the heart of the Uh, or it is uh, the experience of the author himself and we see that suddenly subjectivity has creeped in with the objectivity so it may be there so the same way if we are talking about subjective poetry sometimes the poet uh, start uh, describing such things which takes only observable things not his own emotions so objectivity creeps in with subjectivity so it's a matter of intermingling rather you can say that they are comprehensive and they are intermingled or they are complementary to each other so we need to uh, understand this very complexity of subjectivity and objectivity in poetry so let us start now we will we have come to know that what subjective poetry and what objective poetry is let us go through our today's session the lyric so uh, at first the question arises as in our mind what is lyric and where is it originated so one thing is very clear that the term lyric is very very uh, we are acquainted with this term very much why because while going through some of the songs for films we see that um, that there is written a lyric writer there is a caption lyric writer or we ask generally who is lyric writer so in a way we are introduced with the term so technically we need to um, know this term so let us see that what actually this term is so its origin is supposed to be greek and you know there was a instrument which is supposed which is called lyre l y r e so it, uh, the name comes from their lyre from lyre the lyric comes and it was originated in greek in starting in greece melic or lyric songs were there two categories of songs were there one is called melic or lyric melic was a song which was sung by a single uh, singer and it was always accompanied by a lyre lyre used to accompany that and this was a very good musical harmony second one was choric song which again a musical harmony but there is no single singer here we have a lot of singers here together like we have heard chorus in various drama also so this was also accompanied by some music and uh, probably sometimes it was accompanied by some dance also uh so slowly slowly uh it came or it was being converted and then lyric came to its original form so when we say that uh, what 
characteristics of lyric has so two characteristics are supposed to be the prerequisite for a song to be lyric number one is it is an expression of a single emotion when we are talking about lyric it always tells about some single emotion it may be a emotion of love generally it may be emotion of grief but it will always take a single emotion in the entire song and second point which is most important is that it is a musical composition without music we cannot think of a lyric so music is the prerequisite with the song which actually makes or forms a lyric in true sense so let us talk about the subject matter of the lyric uh, the lyric gives expression to a single emotion or feelings and it appeals more to the heart than to the intellect or to be more precise its appeal to the intellect is through the heart just consider a song you are listening to a song of your choice and when you are involved in the song it is appealing your heart a lot that's why you are involved there and sometimes you know songs are so philosophical that you they stimulates thinking in you and till the end of the song you are full of some of the philosophical ideas some of great impressions in your life some of the uh, thing which you know are very important in life to understand some of the complexity so, so actually it appeals direct to the heart but it may turn you to the towards intellectual uh, you know intellectual bent of mind the poet does not intend to take any long flight he wishes to convey his impression swiftly memorably and musically here poet has no haste to write a long poem or take you towards long things uh, it is very obvious that when you write a very long poem actually you intend to lose uh, that grip wise like grip over the emotions or expression so poet here doesn't take it uh, too long and it is generally a short composition and but poet takes you very swiftly from one emotions one expression to other and uh, the poem uh, just leaves such an impression that uh, you get involved to it and you are very much connected to it uh, like wordsworth says in solitary reaper you know that uh, the music he bore in his heart was heard year after even he was not there in that place where he listened to the solitary reaper and this is the power of the song when you get involved in that edgar allan poe who was an american lyric writer he also remarks that the degree of excitement which would entitle a poem to be so called at all cannot be sustained through a composition of any great length he also denies that lengthy poetry can make that very emotion or expression so impactful in your mind the lyric is subjective poem expresses emotion and intensity personal which we have discussed many time let us uh, focus on the structure of the lyric the lyric can be divided into three distinct part and uh, according to the mood so when inspired by some emotion so lyric are generally supposed to have these three parts it is not a hard and fast rule but uh, to understand something a structure must be there so a uh, structure wise we can analyze this in three part part 1 is that part which starts the lyric and it states the very emotion it is not very lengthy it just introduces a emotion or expression to you which poet is describing you come to know that what poet is thinking to describe or what he is actually describing in part second it consists of the thought suggested by the emotion the emotion which was suggested by the initial lines uh, the second part actually uh, just explore uh, more on that emotion and uh, brings forth the thoughts of the poet on that it is a kind of elaboration and it is supposed to be somehow long in you know a narration and in uh, lines and third part is that which marks the poet's return to his initial mood the mood of reason in the third and final part the poet again returns to the initial emotion and 
uh, he actually comes back to the emotion after exploring it and sometimes the end of the poetry becomes intellectual where the poet uh, taking support of the emotions which he started at early or which explored in the middle part he turns his thoughts towards some philosophical uh, uh, you know theory or philosophical uh, outcomings or conclusions and it becomes somehow intellectual at the last part so these are the three parts of the lyric let us understand these three parts through an example of a poem by robert harry he was a great lyric writer so the poem is to blossom and the poem is described here in the first two lines uh, we see that the subject or the initial emotion is introduced in the first two line and second uh, lines second part which is uh, here which is supposed to be long is thought suggested by the emotions and in the last part we see that that in the five six lines a uh, conclusion which is an intellectual reaction to the early emotional disturbance and the emotional disturbance which is being shown in the poetry is being concluded here it is actually a beautiful poem about the blossoming of a fruitful tree and at first when it start the emotion he started with questions that uh the fruitful tree comes and the fruits and the birds comes there in the uh, it blossoms there uh, when fruits uh, are there and then he says that why do you fall so fast means why everything gets finished so fast why the tree becomes bare so fast and then in the second part he explores his thought that how does it happen and uh, in third part he becomes philosophical that whatever is beautiful or whatever is here uh, which is born here actually is meant to go to the grave and it becomes somehow intellectual at the last part if you go through the line and if you go or analyze the poetry these three parts will be uh, harmonizing with this poem let us talk about some famous lyric uh, o to the west wind by pb shelley is a famous lyric here people might be confused that it is an ode actually ode sonnet haiku elegy they are actually a form of lyric people don't ever uh, confuse on this part that their names are different no but they are accompanied by musical instrument and they can be sung so they are all lyric so my last duchess is a dramatic monologue by famous dramatic monologue writer by robert brian and uh, oh captain my captain you might have heard by walt whitman and oh word thou in the cowed blast by robert burns the pain of sleep by samuel taylor coleridge london 18 1802 by william hurd wordsworth shall i compare thee to a summer's day by william shakespeare these are some famous lyric though there are an many lyrics which can be called famous whatever came to my mind i have just jotted it down but there are so many lyrics which are beautiful and beautifully sung and uh, you can just go through those lyrics and actually uh, the rhyme and the music or uh, uh, in the lyric was really introduced by the elizabethan poets because they experimented with the ups and downs and the with the syllables and with the meters of the poem in elizabethan age and actually the real uh, real uh, melody creeps in in uh, you know this uh, lyric from the elizabethan age they have done it marvelously and you can go through some of the lyrics of the shakespeare they are marvelous and you will come to know that all the elizabethan poets who have really worked hard in lyric they have infused a kind of melody and music in the lyric which actually justifies its name and its prerequisite and its area so let us sum up student what we have learned till now that lyric is a single poem it deals with a single emotion it is a musical poem word music being an important element in its effect means the music of uh, notes the meter the rhyme rhythm all has uh, a lot of scope here it is subjective poem always uh, related to the personal emotions in expression and it expresses the varying moods of the author 
and it is a well knit poem it has a definite structure and it is divided into three parts however should not be pressed too far some lyrics may not reach an intellectual conclusion at all which i have already talked about a poet's emotion is a law unto itself and pursues a course no critic can prescribe so i hope that these are the uh, i hope that this uh, lecture has helped you somehow and these are the some of the references which i have taken help while making preparing this lecture wikipedia a background to english literature by b prasa and daily poetry and a glossary of literary terms by m h abrams and oxford book of literary term and i hope that this lecture has uh, somehow made a clear picture of the lyric in your mind and if you have any queries you can just uh, write in comment box of the youtube or you can just um, uh, mail to me in an gangola at rate of yoe.ac.in or you can just uh, uh mail it and gangola at rate of gmail.com so i hope that students uh, this series will be immensely beneficial for you and in the next series we will discuss about uh, the sonnet so till then bye thank you have a nice day